I'm going to do an exercise for Siamese Mahjong using the National Mahjong League card. Siamese Mahjong is when you play two hands at one time with one opponent. It's very challenging and a lot of fun. Because you get all those tiles, there's a lot that you can do with the tiles. There's a lot of flexibility. Sometimes the analysis can be a little overwhelming. That's why it's good to practice. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do three random pulls and we'll alternate between player one and player two. So we'll get 28 tiles, then 27, and then 28. We have a joker, flower, one of each of the dragons. We have an east and a west. In cracks, we have one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all singles. In bams, we have two, four, five, six, seven, pair of twos, pair of fives. In dots, we have one, five, seven, eight, nine. We have a pung of fives. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first discards? If these were my tiles, I'd probably play two, four, six, eight, and big odds. Five, seven, nine. Eight discards. That's not bad. If you can make a plan for your tiles around the strength of the hand, whether it's multiples or the predominant pattern, and you have eight discards or less, I'd say you have a pretty good chance to win. We could maybe even play a pair hand here. We'd have to let a five go. And we have a joker, so I probably wouldn't play two pair hands, but we do have a good potential for the two, four, six, eight pair hand. Maybe what we could do down here, if we can get a nine crack, is play the concealed hand, five, seven, five, seven, nine crack. So this is how I would do it. Now there's one little tip I have. Anytime you're doing evens and odds, always keep in mind consecutive run. Because here we have sixes and eights, we may be able to switch to consecutive run five through eight, five, six, seven, eight. We really don't have the right six though to go from this pung. So I would keep my eye on consecutive run, big numbers, five through nine maybe, and then just kind of play it out. So always remember that you can fill in numbers from evens to odds and vice versa. Well, you would go from odds to consecutive, evens to consecutive. So they would go to consecutive run. Five, six, seven, eight. I suppose if we get threes, we could do two, three, four, five. Maybe keep this. Because we do have two, three, four, five in here. Or even, even one, three, five. Maybe keep one three because we could do one three five and then six seven eight nine. So maybe start by discarding those. You don't want to spread yourself out too thin though, so be careful there. If you would do something differently on this pull, write pull one and what you would do with these tiles.
we have a flower, a pung of green dragons, and then a red and a white dragon. We have an east and a west, singles. In cracks, we have three, four, seven, eight, nine, pair eight and nine. In bams, we have four, six, eight, nine, pair four, pair nine. In dots, we have one, two, four, five, seven, pair fours. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first discards? If these were my tiles, I think I would play like numbers with fours, maybe dragons, maybe even a pair hand, and then seven, eight, nine consecutive run. So here we could do like numbers with fours and dragons. That would leverage that pung there and two pair. But I would keep all the fours and dragons, see what, what comes out. And then here, if we get north and south, we might be able to play the pair hand. The other thing I was thinking is we could play news with fours and then six, seven, eight, nine of some kind here. If we get more flowers, we could do seven, eight, nine in one suit, or we could do eight, nine off suit dragons. Like right there, eight, nine dragons. That's a pretty nice start for that hand. Maybe see about getting more flowers, because then we could do noose with fours, but we need more flowers. So I wouldn't pick a hand yet. I would just gather. Discard those first. If you would do something different with these tiles, write pull two and what you would do. We have a couple of jokers, east, west, south, pung of west, pair south. In cracks, we have three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, pair three and five. We have a flower down here, a white dragon and a green dragon. And then we have three, four, six in bams, one, six, eight, nine in dots with a pair of nines. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on? And what would be your first discards? If these were my tiles, I think I would play five, seven, nine dragon, and then maybe news with threes pair hand. This is a challenge. I don't think we have enough jokers or flowers to play a quint, but my mind does go there. So let's just see what this would look like. Maybe quint with threes or five, seven, nine dragon, five, seven, seven, nine dragon. This is pretty weak. So I probably would keep the nine for big odds of some kind. And then up here, focus on wins. That would take us down to eight discards. The other thing I was thinking is maybe hold these for a potential 
year hand concealed. If we can get twos, we'd have to let this go. But anytime I have lots of discards, I think about plan B. So I think I would start by tossing those and then news with threes, big odds. We could even maybe do three, six, nine. That was actually the one of the things I was thinking is to play three, six, nine. So let's start by discarding those. Five, seven, nine, and then three, six, nine, maybe a quint. Discarding these would give us time to gather and reassess as we build. This one was a challenge, I think. If you would do something differently with these tiles, write pull three in the comment section below. There are many strategies in the four player game that can be applied to the Siamese Mahjong game, but there are some strategies that are specific to Siamese Mahjong. One of the primary differences is that you are working on two hands, so you can use the concealed tiles interchangeably until they're exposed, then they're locked in. So one of the strategies that I recommend is staying concealed as long as possible so you can utilize jokers and stay flexible with whatever hands you're playing. As far as the four player strategies, build around multiples. That is a diehard strategy that applies no matter what version of American Mahjong you're playing. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.